Biden admin hands out business favors for to billionaire donors. And I'm going to call this one Biden billionaires get Biden business breaks. Jennifer Granholm, Nicholas and Jody Pritzer, arc like Joe Biden kickback. That's that's the phrase we're going for. I, I could just call this Biden's billionaire beneficiaries. So Biden donors get special treatment. And this is, uh, well, this is another brief. All of these have been briefs. Well, this isn't usually the case, but in this case, most of our popular stories happen to be the briefs. Usually it's it's not. Usually one or two briefs might show up. Uh, I've been knowing this only for this week, so it's still <laughs> early. But Biden, there you see a picture of uh, Jennifer Granholm. And I do want to I, I do want to offer this uh, little caveat here as I do this story that this type of cronyism is nothing new the biden administration is not unique the trump administration had had their a- a example i can't think of anything per- specifically offhand right this second uh but uh, the trump administration had their own cronyism the bush and the bush and the clinton and the obamas and all of them this is a fundamentally corrupt system in general coercive enterprise governance is the system of governance that constantly rewards those who are willing to do the most harm to their neighbors for the least amount of reasons. These are usually the ones that are rising to the top. If you see a politician, you see somebody willing to murder your neighbor for reasons that don't have to do with actually violating someone directly. So with that caveat in mind, I, I just want to point out that I don't want to sound self-righteous and like Biden is the only one doing this or somehow uh, this is new to politics. But it, this was uh, the, the, one of the most popular stories, and I even debated whether I was going to cover this story because of the reason that it really doesn't showcase anything terribly unique uh, about the Biden administration compared to other administrations. But I decided I'm going to cover it anyway. Why not? Well, why? But why not? Well, I don't know. Jennifer Granholm is is the one that I pictured here, but she might not necessarily be the, the, the most beneficiary of this policy although she is the energy secretary so <laughs> a little gift is par for the course for most political factions be they gop or dnc in this case the moral supremacist dnc oh that's that's right there you go I'm reading my thing now i remember why i decided to cover this in this case the moral supremacist dnc is is revealing yet again what it actually is a cult of billionaires using morality fears to trick we the poors to hand over more and more of our freedoms so they might live even more free from consequences that they already do. It seems our energy secretary is vested heavily in a business that the Biden administration is showing with government, is showering with government favor. But not only is she the beneficiary of this action, so too are two billionaire donors who are also tied heavily to the same company. And this is from Free Beacon, a right leaning publication. Dem mega donors, officials financially tied to electric bus company boosted by Biden. Colin Anderson and Matthew Foldy contributed on this article, and I'm reading an excerpt from it. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm is not the only prominent Democrat with financial ties to an electric bus company repeatedly boosted by the Biden administration documents reviewed by the Washington Free Beacon show. Nicholas and Jody Pritzker. Members of Illinois Democratic Governor J.B. Pritzker's mega donor family own nearly 12 million shares of Arclight through their venture capital fund, Tau Capital. Arclight in January announced a $1.6 billion merger with Proterra, which will see the electric vehicle manufacturer go public in 2021. Graham Holt served on Proterra's board for nearly four years and still holds up to $5 million in company stock. National Economic Council Director Brian Deese is also tied to Proterra through BlackRock, the investment giant, when he, where he worked as global head of sustainable investing before joining the Biden administration. BlackRock is one of several investment firms that pumped a combined $415 million into the Proterra merger, and Deese reported holding more than $2.4 million in BlackRock vested restricted stock in his February financial disclosure. These investors are po- po- poised. I guess that was supposed to be poised for steep gains. So as ArcLight stock price has surged 50 percent from $11.90 to $18 per share since January, that's a that's a lot of cabbage there. That's a lot of cabbage. And if you have five million dollars in stock, that's a lot of cabbage there, folks. So 
I did highlight this. I did. That's right. I, now I remember why I chose to run with this story. And I was hesitant because of the fact that, again, this, this doesn't necessarily show anything that the admin, other administrations haven't done. But this is an administration that is wholly, is fully embracing the, the moral supremacist, legalistic, uh, pharisaical cult that is SJW, Black Lives Matter, critical race theory, whatever you want to say. And so when they, when they're led by billionaires, and, and that's why when, if you're a Black Lives Matter organization, I want you to understand you are led by white billionaires. You are, they're your masters. You are literally serving white billionaires while they continue to take advantage of, of the moral supremacist ideology that you're advancing for the purpose not of lifting anybody up, let alone black Americans. It is for the purpose of solidifying their hold on power so they can eliminate competition. So it bears noting it's kind of like the self-righteous Republican that goes around all the time going against uh, gay people for gay rights or whatever, and you find that he's he's uh, having secret liaisons in bathhouses. Normally, I'm I'm, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not interested in trying to uh, track down the sexual habits of our politicians, but when they make their career off of a moral supremacist, ideological, pharisaical uh, belief system, uh, well then, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's very right to call them out and show them what, what hypocritical liars they are, that uh, they are literally, they're, the, the, but one of the, which, which is actually a principle that I agree with, so I, there's plenty of things I agree with Black Lives Matter on. There's plenty of things that I like about critical race theory. It's just that the underlying assumptions are so hateful and destructive. I can't I can't partner with them. But one of the, one of the principles is that know your know your power, the power position you have, and when you have a significant power advantage over the other, be aware of that. In Christianity, it can be really summed up in the idea that Christ says. I give you a new command, love one another as I have loved you. If you love people the way that Christ loves us, if you're in a position of leadership, your job is to wash the feet of the others. So it's, you get this constant flipping of power when you simply, as a leader, as a p person in a power advantage, when you're in a power advantage situation with someone, you're seeking to lift the other up. This is a Christian principle that uh, these ideologies have taken. Most of their fundamental moral assumptions come from Christianity. They just remove Christ and they remove redemption and grace and hope from the equation because they've turned it upside down. It's Christ in an upside down cross, which isn't Christ at all. So I think I'll end it with that.